welcome back to another video this is Naveen here in this video I'm going to show you how you could uh, schedule your regular jobs in Azure SQL DB as you know with Azure SQL DB you will not be getting a SQL Server agent so you will just get it your database which you would be managing so in this video I'll show you using Azure automation account how you could uh, do your repetitive tasks or how you want to schedule things with your Azure SQL database though like the same thing can be achieved with uh, other Azure services like Azure uh, logic apps or Azure data factory or even like you could also do it with just a PowerShell alone so this is one of the option what I'm going to show you is one of the option using which you could achieve this okay so that's what we are going to see so to demonstrate this um, I have a small scenario okay so what I'm going to do is um, so recently I was looking for uh, options to set up uh, alert whenever you have a blocking for an X number of hours or minutes right so basically the idea was to set up blocking okay so by default you have a good amount of metrics which are available with the Azure but unfortunately like I didn't see anything in specific to blocking like how you used to have with your custom monitoring tools etc which will send you blocking report right if uh, a session is blocked for X number of minutes or so you could have your own threshold so I thought like uh, how we could achieve something similar with Azure SQL DB so before we <coughs> go and look at our uh, Azure automation part I'll quickly show you my database so I have my SQL server and this server is holding uh, two of my databases one is a free tier DB and the other one is running with standard s0 okay so for this demonstration i would be making use of this db1 database and i am connected to this database from management studio this is what you could see and it i'm just going to simulate a simple blocking okay so what i will do is i'll create a table with uh, a name demo and with a single column saying id with integer data type and I'm going to open an explicit transaction and do a insert okay so this transaction is not yet committed and on the other window I am going to run an alter statement so this should simulate a blocking which you could see here okay so basically session ID 66 is blocked by 61 so 66 is nothing but our alter statement and 61 is uh, the session which contains the insert statement so now <coughs> this is the blocking scenario which we have in the azure sql db so again as i said this is just an example okay so like this you could have uh, various other use cases like let's say if you want to uh, send an email if you have a long running queries so similar things you could achieve with azure automation account <coughs> so now moving on let's see what is azure automation okay so this is uh, like a service you can say like a platform which azure gives where you could deploy and manage or do a response like create an event based automated to diagnose and resolve issue or or you could also orchestrate things okay so to keep our demo simple okay what I did like let me go to the home page okay if you go to um, all services and if you search for automation account you will see this okay Azure automation this is what I used and <clears throat> it's very straightforward for you to create an Azure automation account so let's quickly see it <coughs> so 
now i'm going to pick a resource group and i'll just say like what is my automation account name okay i'll just say test automation okay name is invalid okay wait test automation account i'll just name something like this and then if you go to advanced like here it gives you an option whether you want a system assigned managed identities or user assigned so this is something which you would be using depending on your use case i also have a demo where i'll show you like how you could make use of system assigned managed identities shortly okay for now like you can just leave it as default and again this is for the connectivity i'll leave it default as it is so that's it so once you fill all these details you will get an azure automation account okay so <clears throat> if i click on this azure automation account this gives you whole bunch of different options which you get with this account okay <clears throat> so one of the thing which we are going to look at is the run books okay by default uh, when you create an azure automation account you get these two run books by default okay this is something which i created uh, let me show you what is there inside this okay what i did is all i did is create a run book and you have to define the name of your run book so i'll just say um, run book 1 for example and this azure automation account supports powershell and python these two are the languages which are supported by this so if you know how to like interact with azure using python you can go with python so for my case i have chosen powershell and you have to select what is the runtime version which you are going to select like what is the powershell runtime which you would be using again like within this there is very less uh, details which you would define so i'll just cr quickly create one as soon as i create i get a window okay so here i can put my powershell script which i want to run okay so what i will do is i'll close this window and i'll go back here now you see um authoring status is new because we just created it i don't have any code but if at all if i have some any code here right so i'll just uh, quickly show you this uh, window so that you will be familiar with it what i did i just clicked on the same run book and i can go here and say edit in portal again it takes me to the same window so what i can do like uh, i'll go to the actual uh, run book which i have created so this is the one i created for uh, blocking okay so as i told you we all we need is a simple powershell script okay which i have it here so you will also have access to this script <coughs> okay this is in a public repo <coughs> let's quickly go through this script okay to understand what we are doing so i have written a script okay which will take <coughs> input parameters as server name database name email uh to and from then smtp server details okay so the reason why i added smtp is to send an email notification right that's what we are trying to achieve okay so if you want a very basic task like you could still like uh, let's say if you want to do index maintenance or something where you have a requirement just to run the command on a set of servers in that case you don't have to go for email part but for this demonstration i have added the smtp details as well so that we will see how the email is coming okay for this demonstration i have used the gmail smtp server okay so that i can show you the email and this is the query which i have used to identify the blocking maybe i'll remove this and i'll quickly run this and show so this is the output which we should get in our email okay and then i have some uh, next block try catch block okay which where we will be again like doing the connection to the db etc and then there is some formatting of html data which happens so that we get a nice report to our 
email okay this is where we the connection to the db and all is happening so one key thing to remember is okay there are two important credentials which is parameterized and which is safely stored here okay i'll quickly show you under the azure automation account you have something called uh, credentials okay so i this is my email address and uh, the <coughs> other sql server credentials so since password is uh, sensitive information i have parameterized so that you don't have to expose your password it is stored in the credentials so what this code will do is what we do is we do something called get automation ps credential okay when you run this this is going to read what credentials you have stored here basically it's like um, you will have username and a password which is that is what you are seeing here username is nothing but if i retrieve the username for smtp server credential it will return my email address and if i retrieve the username for sql server credentials this will retrieve the username which uh, i configured my azure sql database okay using this account only i am connecting to my azure sql db so these two things you have to add an entry here make sure the spelling the wording is same you have to give the exact same thing i have added a comment here which you could refer okay and once that is in place you just have to update all the server name db name email and all and let's go back to the script how it looks like i'll quickly show you let's open this run book basically <coughs> and what i'll do is i'll say edit in the portal so it's the same run book and if you want to test it here right what you can do is you can go to the test pane and since the powershell script which i have written is parameterized you could also supply other uh, server details okay in this case i have also written the default value which i want to hard code it or i want to pass it so in the playbook which the run book i am having right so here all the details are already supplied so what i'll do i'm not going to put the details here okay instead i'll just start okay as soon as i hit on start it is going to take that code okay and it's going to execute it if you go and see so what it is doing it will fetch all these parameters <coughs> and it's going to make connection to our db and then it will run this command and it will try to format the data and it will send an email so it will just take a minute for this to complete let's just wait meanwhile like let's quickly go here let's be sure like blocking is still there because uh, this is what we want right uh, let's wait okay now you see right these are the messages which i have printed in my powershell script and it says connecting to the database blocking session detected preparing remote report and email sent let's go back here and if you see we got a nice email with all the details whatever we have uh, given in that query again like uh, this query it could be any of your custom query whatever you are using for your troubleshooting it could be any of your query and you could incorporate the same logic within this sort of code and uh, have the email delivered as well in a nice formatting okay so this is one example okay now i'll show you the other example okay let's um, i'll take the uh, different example this time so let's say you want to stop and start the vm let's say you have a virtual machine which is with like dev or qa team is using and you want to schedule uh, the vm stop and start okay so i have written a simple uh, run book which could do that again i'll show you like how <coughs> this code looks like real quick it's very simple okay what we are doing we are taking the action as a parameter whether you want to start or stop the vm okay and again this also can be hard coded you could have two different run book one to start and stop but just to show you like these things can be parameterized uh, i have just kept it like this and one of the interesting thing with this is 
um, we are using the system managed identity okay let me quickly show you what it is let's go to azure portal in a different tab <coughs> and i'll show you like how this virtual machine looks like if you go to security we have enabled the system assigned managed identity okay what i did is like if you go to iam role roles assignment ro role assignment you will see our azure automation account which is this one is having access to our vm to manage things okay so that's the reason in the code we are connecting using this azure automation account with hyphen identity means it's going to make use of the system managed identity to access that session so whatever access you have granted to that managed identity will be taken by default and we have granted the contributor role for this vm for our account now what we will do is like uh, this script is doing is it's just having a try catch block if it is start it's going to start the vm if it is a stop request it's going to stop that's all okay the current status of this vm is in running state so what i'll do is uh, let's start this so here i can say whatever parameters i want so in this case i want to stop this vm right i'll just say stop and that's it so here you will see all the logs etc like what is happening with that <coughs> run book like once the execution is started so let's just wait for like few more seconds and you should see a message saying uh, this vm is stopped now so like as of now we are doing these things manually okay again you do have options to schedule things which i'll show you like where you can set the schedule and all and when you schedule it so that you don't have to sit and uh, do these things manually um this would be helpful like whenever you want to schedule something manage something at the uh, azure infrastructure level you could make use of these things to uh, automate it okay so you see here right authenticating using system assigned managed identity and stop virtual machine let's quickly check if this machine is really stopped okay you see right it is in deallocated state status is stopped so using this uh, run book we were able to successfully stop that machine okay so like this whatever scenario you can think of which uh, you can come up okay let's say if you want to scale up and scale down your azure sql db that also can be done with similar run books let's say during uh, cup like let's say you have a peak hours for your business okay during that time you want to manually scale up instead of some uh, person doing it you could schedule those things using this uh, azure automation and uh, do a scale up and scale down so for all these different use cases this azure automation account is going to be very helpful so that's it i had for this demo i hope you liked it so do let me know your feedback in the comments thank you